Hello and welcome to this course. I'm super excited that you decided to join and I can't wait to show you all the cool tactical maneuvers that you can implement in your game. And we're gonna have a lot of fun and I promise you're gonna enjoy every minute of this course. In this short video, I just wanted to show you the sections of this course so you can navigate it better. So right now I'm gonna jump behind the computer and I'll show you around. Hello and welcome to the course on geometrical chess motifs. I'm very glad you decided to join this course and I think it will benefit your chess game significantly. I can't wait to show you the various tactical chess maneuvers that I've prepared in this course and in particular I'm very excited to show you the last section x-raying and I know you guys have been interested in it because a few of you have been asking me about it. So without further ado I'll jump behind the computer right now and show you around the course and the structure of the course. As I already mentioned, in this course we will be looking at five different sections, one for each motif covered. The motifs covered in this class are blockading, damming, clearing of space, opening a file rank or diagonal, and after multiple requests, X-raying. Each section contains three puzzles on the covered motif, as well as an analysis of a game played between two chess grandmasters and how they use the motif to benefit their game. At the end of each section there are five quizzes for you to practice. And remember practice makes perfect. Hello Mark here and in this section we will have a look at the motif of clearing space. Now this motif is sort of similar to the motif of opening a file, a diagonal, or rank. However, it does have its own nuances and that's why it's a separate motif. So, the motif of clearing space refers to, let's say, you have a winning combination that you can play. And you can see it except, god damn it, there is that one piece and, it ha and it's your piece and it just it's just in your way. It just you need you need to move it away. You don't care if it disappears. Actually, you would prefer if it just wasn't there in the game at this stage. So, you need to clear that space. You need to clear that piece out of that out of the path of your mega cool combination of your awesome tactical maneuver. How to do it? I'll explain this in this particular motif, and we'll start with a very. Uh, with a fairly trivial example, I shouldn't say very. And we'll start by looking at a fairly trivial example. And as you can see in this position set in front of you, both players have the chance to checkmate their opponents. So white can put their queen on h7 and that will be checkmate. Black can put their queen on h2 and that is checkmate. But as you can see, there are some pieces in the way of this checkmate. And this is what I'm talking about. So you want to try and clear some space. Without revealing any more spoilers, please pause this video and see if you can find the winning move. The winning move for white in this position is bishop to c4 check. And then if b takes on c4, then queen to h7 check mate. Of course, after bishop to c4 check, Black can play rook to f7 blocking from the check and then queen simply goes to h7 check and the only move for the king is f8 and queen to h8 checkmate because there's a rook controlling the e-file. Let's go back. Why wouldn't we put the bishop on h7 check? Because that is just blocking the space for the queen. We want to put the queen here so we do not want to clear space. Imagine if you're cleaning your room and you're throwing all your clothes from one side of the room to the other. You don't want that. You want to take clothes, put them in your closet and hopefully get on with your day. Anyway, let's have a look at this position from Black's point of view. I'll quickly reverse this chessboard. Okay, so as I said previously, the black queen wants to go on h2 and checkmate the white king. However, this pesty little fella is preventing that from happening. So, what can we do in this position? 
Did you see it? Did you find it? So, we can play knight to e2 check. And if bishop takes, or queen takes, or rook takes, queen to h2 check, mate. And that is how the motif of clearing space works. Again, this was a fairly straightforward position that I set up just to demonstrate the concept of what I'm talking about. And in the next videos, we'll look at more complicated examples. And hopefully you'll have a bit more of a challenge and you can actually set this, set up those, uh, set up the positions on your chess boards at home and give them a go. But for now, just have a great day and practice what we've learned. Remember, practice makes perfect. Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to have a look at a game played between two grandmasters of chess, Mikhail Botvinnik and Grigory Stepanov. This game was played in 1930. And the motif used in this game, like the pivoting point of this game, was utilizing the motif of clearing space. So let's get straight into it, shall we? Game began with the Queen's Gambit. So Mikhail Botvinnik had white pieces and he played d4. Stepanov answered knight to f6, c4, e6, knight to c3, d5, knight to f3, c6, bishop to g5. Bishop to g5 is a very sharp move. Normally, in this situation, the more conservative move is to advance pawn to e3, thus protecting the pawn on c4, which it's here intended for this. So in case black takes and then bishop can develop at the same time as taking a piece. However, Botvinnik played g5, bishop to g5 instead of e3, and this actually allows black in this position to take the pawn on c4 or to first move pawn to h6 threatening the bishop and then still take the pawn on c4. However, Stepanov didn't do any of this. What he played was knight from b to d7. e3, bishop to e7, bishop to d3, h6, bishop to h4. Black castles kingside, white castles kingside. Stepanov plays a6 in this position. The most common move in this position would actually be to play d takes on c4. And after bishop takes on c4, black would play b5, bishop to d3, a6, rook to c1, and now c5. So what this does is actually create space for the white squared bishop to be developed. And it's really hard to get him developed otherwise because he's kind of trapped by the knight, by the pawn on e6. And this is like the easy route for him. However, in the game, Stepanov played a6 first. And Botvinnik countered the move to b5 with a4. So now Stepanov plays d takes on c4, bishop takes on c4, Stepanov plays knight to d5. This move is like the backup plan in case this a6 didn't work out, which it didn't. The logic behind this backup plan is as follows. So Stepanov is trying to exchange pieces, like trying to get Botvinnik to um, exchange a few pieces so it frees up some space for Stepanov. However, Botvinnik doesn't buy into this and he moves g3. And now, all this move d5 did is creates a potential for loss of initiative because Botvinnik can create a momentum. When moving his pawn to e4, he'll automatically be attacking the knight even though he's kind of just moving, advancing his pawn to the center squares. Moving on with the game, after Botvinnik moved his bishop away to g3, Stepanov played knight from the 7th rank to f6, queen to c2, 
bishop to d7 and now Botvinnik plays e4 what we talked about so the computer program analyzes this position as equal more or less like within a fraction however if you look at this position like wouldn't you agree that you would be more comfortable playing as white pieces in this case because you have the two center pawns the pawn structure even though it's broken up it's like yep mm, that's kind of sacrificial on the queen's side but this just looks so much more composed anyway that's just uh, I guess comes down to preference so Stepanov plays knight to b4 queen to e2 queen to a5 so this move queen to a5 is let's say uh, this move queen to a5 is probably a miscalculation by Stepanov because the queen is positioned very poorly and you'll soon see why. So Botvinnik plays knight to e5, rook from a to d8, f4, bishop to c8, and now Botvinnik played f5. Please notice that white was finally able to advance the pawn to f5. Also notice that the knight on e5 is attacking f7, as well as the bishop is ex well, technically x-raying the pawn on f7. And you will see just in a second why this is important. So Stepanov makes uh, another slight miscalculation or just probably didn't think twice about it, which I doubt at that level of chess game. Stepanov decides to take the pawn on f5. And now, remember how I said the black queen on a5 was positioned very poorly? So... If you wish, you may pause this video and try find the winning move. Keep in mind, though, that the motif of this section is clearing space. Did you find the winning move? Before I reveal the answer, I'll give you a quick hint. Can you spot? Can you spot which piece on the board needs to be cleared? cleared away I guess can you spot which piece on the board is in the way okay the piece that needs to be removed is the bishop on c4 which Botvinnik doesn't style bishop takes on f7 check because it's protected by the knight the king can't take so rook takes on f7 and then knight to c4 and now you can clearly see why I was saying queen is positioned very poorly on a5. There is no place for the queen to go. She is trapped. Let's have a look. The bishop on g3 is protecting... The bishop on g3 has the squares e5, d6 and c7 under control. Not that the queen can jump to d6, but... I'm just trying to cover this whole cluster over here. In fact, let's remove that. Let's only cover the squares where the queen, the, where the queen can potentially jump. So, the pawn on e4 is covering the square d5. The pawn on the square d4 is covering the square c5. The knight on c3 is covering b5. And the knight that just jumped to c4 is covering b6 as well as attacking as well as attacking the black queen. Pretty cool, eh? This is all because Botvinnik cleared that space for the knight. He he saw that the black queen is trapped, and he knew he needed to put his knight here. And how? And what way better to do so than to use a forcing move? The game continues, even though Stepanov is so far behind, he decides to power through. Respect to him, but it's a little bit naive to think that you could win with such a material disadvantage against Botvinnik. Stepanov plays b6. Knight takes on a5. B takes on a5. E takes on f5, rook takes on d4, bishop to e5, rook to d3, rook from a to d1, 
Bishop c5 check, king to h1, rook takes on d1, queen takes on d1, knight from f file to d5, knight takes on d5, knight takes on d5, queen to c1, bishop to f8, bishop to d4, c5, bishop takes on c5, and rook to c7. Now, as you can see, the white bishop is pinned. Through sacrificing that pawn, Stepanov actually is, is about to win a bishop. However, Botvinnik had other plans. I'm fairly confident when I say that Botvinnik most likely saw the spin coming, but I think he just but I think he just decided to slightly level the playing field against Stepanov without actually giving him too much of a fair go because the pawn he just took is technically an extra pawn for him. Plus, as a result of this whole combination that he's about to do and you're about to witness, you'll see that it's going to be a bishop for each side. Botvinnik is going to not only have the pawn as a material advantage, but also he's going to have a rook against the knight, which is significant. Anyhow, Botvinnik decides, oh well, I'll just take the bishop on f8, rook takes on c1, rook takes on c1, bishop takes on f5, bishop to d6, bishop to e4, now bishop to c7. And in this position, Stepanov resigned in view of the following continuation. Either knight takes and then rook takes. So, so this is the classic development and late game. You try to exchange all the pieces to make your material advantage more apparent. Or let's say if knight didn't take, then Botvinnik gets another pawn for free. So Stepanov had enough and he resigned. So let's go back to this position. Did you find the winning move? How about did you figure out that the bishop was the piece that was in the way? What a beautiful combination and hats off to Botvinnik. He's one of my favorite chess players, probably in the top five, definitely. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we're excited to see such a classy example of the motif of clearing space. I encourage you guys to try solve the quizzes that I've prepared for you at the end of this section. They'll definitely help you understand this motif much better and solidify what you've observed so far. And by all means, please practice as much as you can. It is going to benefit your chess game and your professional life in ways you cannot imagine. Have a great day and I can't wait to see you in the next section.